California has long been the center of the solar industry here in the United States, even amid some of the policy and incentive changes that have come and gone. Through Q3 of 2024, California has an amazing over 45 megawatts of solar installed in the state, ranking as the number one state in the country. According to the Solar Energy Industry Association, or SIA, the, the state has over 2,400 operating solar companies in it, employing more than 80,000 people. Solar energy provides 31% of the state's total electric usage, and since 2019, the deployment rate of solar storage, the batteries, has increased more than 1,200%, making California the leading solar deployment state for both solar and battery storage. Policies and incentives have come and gone, but there are still a number available today. Let's take a look at some of what's available. You can find an entire list at desire.org or by talking to your solar provider. Also, if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video if you find this helpful. From the federal government, people who go solar in California are subject to the federal ITC or the investment tax credit. This provides a 30% tax credit towards the overall cost of your solar and your battery systems. This tax and tax credit had previously gone down, but has been renewed thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. So through 2032, this is available at 30% to homeowners. After that, it will start to step down. People in California with commercial systems can also take advantage of IRS Section 179 Modified Acceleration, which would change the classification of solar asset to a five-year asset, so the tax breaks can take be taken off of the uh, depreciation cost of that asset. That Again, that is mainly for commercial systems. Let's let take a look at what's available from the state of California. First of all is the Active Solar Energy Exclusion Program. This is a property tax exemption for people who install solar energy on their properties. By installing solar, you do get increased home values. And this, this exemption would make it so that the home's value and the property taxes associated are not going to increase because of that solar. The program was originally set to end on January 1st of 2025, but has been extended through 2027. The most prominent incentive available in California is the Self-Generation Incentive Program, or SGIP. SGIP is a battery storage incentive that incentivizes homeowners to install battery storage and is a tiered program paying them up front depending on the amount of storage they have available. So for a customer who would be in any of the four major utilities, you're able to get a tiered approach payment for your system. Now that tiers does go down over time depending on more solar, deploy solar deployment, and currently all the utilities are in step seven which would mean that anybody uh, installing batteries in California is subject to be able to get $150 per kilowatt hour installed. Meaning that if a homeowner were to install a Tesla Powerwall 3 with a 13 and a half kilowatt hour capacity, they would be able to get $2,025 for that battery incentive. SGIP also includes extra incentives for areas that are low income communities, uh, equity communities, and then also areas that are in equity communities and also high fire risks. So in just regular equity communities, that's low-income communities, homeowners are able to get $850 per kilowatt hour for a battery installed, which would mean for that same Tesla Powerwall 3, they can get over $11,000 towards that incentive installation. And then for the high fire areas that are also in equity communities, people can get up to $1,000 per kilowatt installed. You can get over $13,000 for a Tesla Powerwall installed, which covers almost the entire installation of putting those batteries in. Next up is the Demand Side Grid Support Program. This is a program that seeks to enroll customers in a virtual power plant, meaning that your battery would be one of many in the area that can be remotely discharged if the grid is experiencing high times of stress, uh, peak demand, anything like that. So it can happen a few times a year. The exact amounts that have been the last few years are published on the California uh, aggregator websites as well. But notably, this program does not actually give any specific amounts and leaves it up to the aggregator, the person who runs the program that you're working with. So, for example, some places will advertise $350 annually, and some places will only give you about $125 annually. Depends on the person you work with. An aggregator that has a much larger fleet is likely going to give more to their homeowners because those aggregators are actually paid from the state depending on how much power they're pushing out from their fleet. So if they have a ton of people, they could push out a lot of power during those times required and get paid more, thus pay their homeowners more. To be eligible, homeowners need to be part of a publicly owned utility, federal power marketing administration utility, tribal utility, or part of a community choice aggregator. Also available is the disadvantaged communities and single family homes. This DAC-SASH program is a low income program, which would seek to give 
people in low-income communities that would apply a basically full coverage. Uh, there's not any specific amount that's set at, but the system does say it's capped at 5 kilowatts max. However, the program guidelines also do say that the administrators can look at that and determine situation by situation. But effectively, if you were someone who were to qualify for this in a low-income area, you would be able to get pretty much the entire cost of your system completely covered by these incentives and installed for more or less free. Now, net metering has been something that's been in the news a lot with California, as in they adopted NEM 3.0, or Net Energy Metering 3. The third version of this program started back in April of 2023 and absolutely gutted the rates that homeowners will get if they are sending power back out to the grid. We, used to, we actually published a video about energy rates throughout the country that you can view. I'll link here and in the video description. But as of the end of 2024, the average power rate in California was about 31 cents a kilowatt hour. And that can vary widely all the way up to sometimes I've seen as high as 50 cents plus if you're in on peak times. The new way that homeowners are credited for a power sent out to grid is based off a monthly avoided cost calculator. And you can look up online where it basically takes the entire month and calculates a avoided cost rate. The latest version of that puts the avoided cost rate people get paid for any excess power at about four cents a kilowatt hour. So it is incredibly lower than what the actual retail rate of that value is. So what that has done has heavily incentivized storage. And you see that through the SGIP program in California. Basically, without having a battery to store any excess energy, it is just wasting all of that energy that you would send if it goes back to the grid at all. That's why California is essentially a battery on every install state at this point. NEM3 does apply to most utilities in California, but there are a few exceptions to this. People as part of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power can actually still get full retail rate net metering. And Sacramento Municipal District doesn't have net metering, but does have another rebate program, which pays people about $0.07 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's a little bit higher than M3, but still not fantastic. Now, despite all these policy changes that have happened over the last few years, incentives coming and going, California is obviously still a massive marketplace for solar, so I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Maybe there'll be some more incentives that'll help that in the future, but we'll see where that comes from. For more information on these, make sure to go check out the California uh, Energy Commission's websites or the local utility websites. You can also look at desire.org for a full list of what's available or talk to your trusted solar provider. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure you leave a like and we'll catch you in the next one.